<laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest. His greatest contribution to mankind, getting Don Lemon fired. 2024 GOP presidential candidate and author of the new book, Capitalist Punishment, Vivek Ramaswamy. She talks so fast, she uses anti-skid lip gloss. Host of the Fox <laughs> True Crime podcast, Emily Campagno. He gets startled by unfamiliar noises, like applause. Comedian Joe Mackey. And audiences treat him like family by walking out on him. Actor, writer, and comedian Jamie Lissau. So, Jamie, good to see you. You know, political experts actually say that Joe has a better chance of winning than you getting back with your wife. Wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's surprising. What did you make um, of the video? I, it was, first of all, I feel like he only said one word the whole video, but it was like a long one. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, does his speechwriter not have a space bar? I felt like the whole thing was like, hassles, hassles, hassles. <laughs> it was just one thing I could, I could not follow along. Um, let's finish the job. If I hear that one more time after sex. <laughs> I don't know. He's not. He's, he's he's too old. I heard he was at the doctor recently, and the doctor told him he had nine months to live. Mm -hmm. And Joe was like, "Am I sick?" And the doctor was like, "No, that's just how life expectancy works." <laughs> um, <laughs> when I that was good. <laughs> Terrible. When you hear when you first hear the story, though, do you not go? Like, I think we all want to reach a point in our lives where we rest yeah. and spend time with family. Like, so he's 80 years old. Like, wouldn't you want to? I was thinking, like, why wouldn't he want to spend time with his kids? Then I was like, oh, Hunter's his kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a stripper baby grandchild. Yes, him. that's right. Yeah. Vivek, uh, what did you make of the ad? It's interesting. He seems to make, again, the enemy of the people, the people. It's not yeah. about China or, or fentanyl. It's about half of America. Yeah, well, the thing I made of the ad is it has a farce at the heart of it that Joe Biden's actually running for president. Yeah. Joe Biden's yeah. actually not running for president. It just looks like he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the managerial class in this country that has put out this little puppet called Joe Biden mm -hmm. running for president. And that makes sense of his <laughs> cognitive deficits, right? That's not a bug to them. That's a feature because that allows the puppet master to control the puppet. Susan Rice steps down the day before. And so this elder abuse, and I think that's what it looks like to me, elder abuse, mm -hmm. it's just a cost of doing business. If you're the managerial class, that's how you roll. And, and the DNC is protecting him, by the way. Mm -hmm. They're not doing debates. Yep. So they're not going to let anybody challenge the hollowed out husk of a supposed human being and leader that we have in that White House. And I think a big part of the reason why is it's not even him. It's just yeah. like the Wizard of Oz. He's a projection. Yes. He's an empty vessel, Emily, if that's your real name. <laughs> No mention of Kamala, huh? That was weird. I guess maybe they just didn't have time. I mean, he probably doesn't know who his vice president is. <laughs> I have to say that the most concerning thing to me about it was the fa I literally asked myself the question when I saw it, is this a repeat? Like, when I saw it on air, are we repeating two years ago what his campaign ads were? Right. He has not changed one bit. And for someone that campaigned on being the unifier in chief, for him to show as the extremist on his new campaign ad other elected officials current serving elected officials, and he was the one that was supposed to unite us. Mm -hmm. I noticed that the majority of the people in the ad were African-American. Remember, he told them when he ran the first time, you're not black if you don't vote for me. And he's still trying to cater to and pander to this narrative that pitches him, apparently, in this elite managerial class against America. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with the American flag? What's wrong with me standing up for it, standing up for faith? He asks whether or not we want freedoms. Yes, he's taken all of it away. His administration has diminished our rights, our freedoms, our choices. He's bloated our government. He's diminished the value of the dollar. There was zero specificity in that ad because he has accomplished nothing. And you talk about shouldn't he rest? He has been resting. He has done nothing in his 50 years of service. And so I look forward to once a GOP candidate gets in office in two years to actually doing something and restoring my rights and my freedoms. Mm. Yeah. I should come for you. <laughs> So, it's, so you're used to it. It's a tough act to follow. Oh, man, I can't go after Campagno. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, Greg, when I heard that recording, it sounded to me like something 
uh, uh, there would be a recording when someone's recording a will. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's like I don't have much time left. <laughs> and they brought a phone to this hospital bed and got me to do this on a number of takes. I imagine there were a number yes, of takes yes. <laughs> to make that recording. And it wasn't even good. But at least when you have multiple takes, he doesn't do that thing, which I saw him do again today, where he starts one sentence and then he pauses in the middle and then finishes a completely different <laughs> sentence. I love that. It's like a Maroon 5 song where it's <laughs> pop music at the start and then suddenly rap starts playing, except this time it's destroying America. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. We got to move on. We got a great show. We got some surprises. But if I told you, they wouldn't be surprises. Up next, corporate clowns avoid the trauma of acknowledging your mama. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Stop, stop. <laughs> if companies had their druthers, we'd never mention mothers. It's time for... They're doing what with Mother's Day? Come on, is this even real? Sponsored by Ipana Toothpaste. What? I should really look at these before the show starts. <laughs> the Arizona Informer, whatever that is, tweets that several corporations are allowing customers to opt out of receiving any correspondence having to do with Mother's Day. Among the companies doing this is DoorDash, K Jewelers, and Levi's. They claim that Mother's Day can be triggering for some. You know, which is the thing they'd never say about any other day, even to people who get ignored on Father's Day, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> ironically, ironically, even Ancestry.com said Mother's Day may be a tough time, I guess, if you find out your parents were cousins. <laughs> and then Bye Bye Baby says that Mother's Day, for some, can be a really hard day. And that's from a baby furniture store. It's where I got my last bedroom set. <laughs> we reached out to the companies for comment, only heard back from Ancestry, who says Mother's Day can be difficult if you've lost a loved one. But there's another explanation. We must be sensitive to those who had difficulty conceiving. And these are bad things, I'm sure. But since when do companies allow you to opt out of things that bother you? Employees at most companies are inundated daily with emails about special days and months and awareness weeks. Hell, I lost an uncle on Black Friday, but I still shop at Best Buy. <laughs> Walked right over him. <laughs> it's weird that Mother's Day, however, is the only one that's deemed problematic. But by this logic, any holiday could be triggering for some people. So here's the solution, companies. Why don't you stop with all the emails about days and weeks and months because you're picking and choosing what matters and what's hurtful and what demands attention based on activism. You know, at least Anheuser-Busch has the right idea. For Mother's Day, they're sending moms a coupon for a free prostate exam. <laughs> Vivek, you were kind of ahead of the curve on this. You wrote a book on uh, woke corporations. Is there some, I mean, is there some logic to this? I mean, obviously, my, my mom died nine years ago. That doesn't mean Mother's Day can't go on, right? It shouldn't change for me. Yeah, I mean, I think that part of it, I think some of this is the trans stuff. If you can't yeah. define a woman, then you can't have Mother's Day. Right. You're going to offend some people if you don't call it birthing person's day. So yeah. cancel Mother's Day. But, you know, look, on a serious note, what are they going to say? It's because somebody had a miscarriage, somebody who had a mother that died. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. We actually, our first child, mm -hmm. we lost in a miscarriage. And mm -hmm. we ended up having a, a second, our, our child was to be. We thought we were going to lose in a miscarriage. We had him. Mm -hmm. That's a difficult thing to go through. Right. But we can't be in this permanent safe space. Yeah. And we have this culture we've created, corporate America coddling their workers and everybody around them, thinking that the world is a safe space. It's not. We have to embrace reality. And Mother's Day, the things you celebrate, that's what gets you through those difficulties. we got to remember that again. It's true. It's true, Joe. It's like when you hear about um, trigger warnings when they're do with, like in a law school. They're go, we're going to do we're going to do cases of assault or sexual assault. And we have to do a trigger warning. And it's like, no, but you're a lawyer. You have to deal with this. Yeah, it, it's not all about you. You know, I'm being sued by 13 mothers over paternity right now. And I don't <laughs> ask anybody to to not acknowledge the holiday for themselves. It's just. <laughs> Plus, it's an, it's an email. We're triggered by emails. I 
half the emails I get from corporations sent to the same place that my HR emails go, my spam folder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have you tried to block that stuff and it comes out and you can't, they can't, they can't be blocked? They don't let you block it. You can't, they can't let you block stuff from your own company. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Emily, it seems that uh, Mo Mother's Day is now another controversy that we have to pick apart. A controversy created by the woke left. It's a controversy over nothing. It's a shell game while serious things are actually impacting this nation. Here we have to pay attention to this. I think it's, it's so emblematic too because in true fashion, like they miss the whole point of triggering. So it's not that they're just not addressing it or canceling Mother's Day. They're sending an initial email before the holiday saying, if you want to opt out of Mother's Day because Mother's Day is triggering for you and Mother's Day is hard to talk about, then you can opt out of Mother's Day right here in this email talking about Mother's Day. <laughs> It's an absolute aberration, nonsensical yes. display of missing the point, which is that if that if it troubles you on Mother's Day, any connotation the, is difficult. Yes, the opt-out email exactly, is worse. Exactly. <laughs> Would you like to opt exactly. out the way your mother did when she died? Exactly. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> You know, Jamie, uh, do you often, like, drive around the restaurant where your family is celebrating Mother's Day? <laughs> Just drive around wondering, like, what course are they on? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like, what's going on in there? <laughs> um, God, one of these days I might get in there. Um, by the way, we do celebrate Father's Day uh -huh. at the Lisso household. I still have my number two dad mug. Um <laughs> Look at this. This list is bizarre, too, of the places you can get a discount for Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Who is saying to their mom, like, Happy Mother's Day. Here's your Arby's DoorDash meal. <laughs> Here's your and isn't that kind of isn't that kind of a weird thing? And um, I wish I, I do like to I'm a big fan of opting out. Yeah. Sometimes I just wake up. I opt out of all these emails. I get so I wish you could opt out. Like in regular life. I've actually tried this. I'm kind of working on something. Like the other day, my cousin sent me a picture of his new baby, and I just texted back, unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that feel good? Feels good. No, just writing unsubscribe to mm -hmm. anything, no oh, matter. And, and the more heartfelt it is from the other side, yes. the better feeling it is to say yep. unsubscribe. It's great. My, I love doing unsubscribe, and then, and then um, just because you know how gigs are with me for comedy, my auto reply for my email just says, uh, I'll take it. How soon before, uh, like, Dylan Mulvaney has her own Mother's Day card? Uh. Mm. <laughs> right? You know what's funny about the Ancestry.com thing, too? The whole point about how they said, in case you have, you were infertile or whatever, but they, they also omit the biggest, like, thing about Ancestry.com, which is finding out that your parents aren't who they said they were. Right. Right? Like, that's probably the biggest... Happy Mother's Day. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. right got to move on. Up next, why space travel requires controlling your desires. <laughs> Can you indulge your depravity in zero gravity? Experts from NASA say no to getting some assa. <laughs> According to experts, those are my favorite, space tourists will have to sign legal waivers banning them from having sex in space. Apparently, there are just some things you don't want floating around you. <laughs> The problem arises from unanswered biological and legal questions that come with interstellar intercourse, namely the harmful effects of radiation and low gravity on embryos soon after conception. Mm, they could be super babies. It reminds me of that time I had that timeshare near Three Mile Island. <laughs> I left a glowing review on Yelp. <laughs> Little wordplay there. But in other words, a child conceived in space could suffer from unknown problems. And on a space station, it's much harder to sneak out the next morning with your shoes in your hands. <laughs> All of which could lead to litigation against the organizations that are hosting the flight. So experts have made a series of recommendations for the space tourism industry. One of them is to supply passengers with graphic visuals to reduce arousal. <laughs> So, uh, Joe, I mean, let's face it, you don't have sex on Earth, so maybe going to space can't hurt. <laughs>
but they're going to make it illegal for you to have sex in space. So therefore, you're going to be uh, sexless in space as well. No hope for you, really, except to just throw yourself off a cliff. Well, that is just defamation right there, Gutfeld. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be pretty tough to talk me out of my space suit when I can dunk from the three-point line in zero gravity. But I'll say this, for, for intercourse in space, I'm going to need the same things I need on Earth. What? A centrifuge, a Geiger counter, and a wedding ring, Greg. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Marriages are... Marriages are void in space. They don't matter. They don't matter, really. Oh, it's like international waters. There's no law up there. Yeah, international waters. That's what you used to call Jesse. <laughs> hey, look, it's international water. I got my collar up. Hey, Emily, you're a lawyer. You claim to be a lawyer. Still haven't seen any proof of that. But um, <laughs> can you really get sued if people uh, have sex in space? Come on. I mean, how are they liable for that? It's like you could have sex in a cab and give birth to a demon. <laughs> That's called evidence. Learn it, America. Where am I? Yeah, uh, this whole thing is so clear when you just ask who's asking the questions, right? Right. These, like, professors of astrobiology quoted in the article, these questions need to be urgently addressed, guys. Obviously, none of them get laid, and they're uh. just looking for an excuse. We have to go test this out, everyone. Mm. Send me up. That's all we need to know. How ironic they are astrobiologists <laughs> who get no ass. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Huh? I don't even hear that crap on Outnumbered. But the argument was, to answer your question, the argument was that if you conceive a baby in space and it somehow has some type of degenerative effect or, or poor conditions, that you can then sue the carrier. So it's essentially saying, don't have sex in space because then it will prevent the potential for a baby. But to me, I mean, I would think you assume the same risks, if not more, conceiving in New York City. Amen. Yeah. Amen. My God. Jamie, uh, I hear in space, no one can hear you bomb. Up, audience. <laughs> um, do you really need a waiver to tell people not to have sex? Couldn't we just send up married couples? <laughs> um, yeah. I just read a stat that 100% of marriages end in divorce if it's me. <laughs> um, By the way, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I don't like the whole dynamic this is setting up. I don't think we need these guys. It's, isn't it weird, too, that they're going to be like, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nobody blast off. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to get that to I want to get that to catch on as a word. Um, yeah, I don't think it will. Okay. You know, but do you need these horny, you go, I was going to say, do we need these horny people walking around the, I just feel like it's a bunch of loaded guns walking around up there. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a good? I don't know. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. I, I thought that you would be, you always have good tips for us. Oh, I do. I actually came in early and I got a message uh, for everyone. Oh, good. Lisso's <laughs> Lessons Tips from a Divorced Dad. Your time plus your knowledge equals a child's future. So do the math. That's not worth it. This is not going to help you in the court hearings. <laughs> Last word to you, Vivek, and it's Vivek rhymes with cake. I appreciate that. It, it is. is, yes. Quite welcome. I was saying it wrong for this last year. Yeah, and I've, I've been telling you. I'm, I'm glad it sank in. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. People like cake. So I'll tell you this. Look, this is one of the situations where you ask not for permission but for forgiveness. Mm. Because what are they going to do? The damages of breaking this? Are they like, seriously not going to bring you back to Earth? Yeah. That would be not very good PR. So I think mm -hmm. maybe... You clean up the space capsule, whatever it's going to be, to make sure you get your fine paid. But if you're going to pay millions of dollars to go up there, I think you can handle the cleaning fee. Yeah, and you know what else, though, too? It's like, why is mutation seen as a bad thing, Joe? <laughs> right? I mean, we look at our superheroes, and they're all the product of mutation. I mean, if, what if you conceive a child in zero gravity and you give birth to children who can just float around like birthday balloons? <laughs> <laughs> Right? What, what if General Zod is having sex in his void that he's imprisoned in? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and, like, I don't understand how you're going to, like, have a... No one's ever broken a contract about 
sex before, <laughs> yeah. right? You know? And the other thing that's weird is, like, <laughs> you're going to sue the transportation company? None of my lovers have sued Greyhound. <laughs> Speaking of hound, coming up, you can't talk crap when my dog's in your lap. Woo! All right. You know how I judge a presidential candidate. I assess his persuasiveness, his intellect, his backstory. But even more, it boils down to one thing. Does my dog like him? <laughs> Which means it's time for... If you want to get to Pennsylvania Avenue, you've got to give this dog his due. This is the Gus Test. Yep, starting now, I'm challenging anyone running for president to come on this show and let me interview them while they hold my dog, Gus. So let's bring him out! <laughs> Yeah, hold on to him, Vivek. There you go. There you go. He, well, he wants, he wants so badly to get away from you. This is not a good sign. This is not a good sign. Oh, he wants Jamie to be president. He wants Jamie. Uh, not me neither. Oh, he wants Greg. He wants. What's wrong, little guy? Oh, oh my, my goodness. little baby. <laughs> Greg for here? president. There you go. Sit here. I think it's a sign. All right, Vivek. Last week you were interviewed by CNN's knucklehead in chief, Don Lemon. And now the New York Times says that interview led to Lemon being fired. Let's watch that tape. The, the lessons that we still learned. aren't allowed to enjoy the freedoms. I disagree with you country. on that, Don. Okay. I disagree with you. And I think you're doing a disservice well, to our country okay. by failing to recognize when the you, fact that we have the equality in before the law. When you are and you live in this country, then you can disagree with me. Well, well, here's where you and I have a different point of view. I think we should be able to express our views regardless of the color of our skin. We should have this debate I'm not saying you without me regarding views, you as a black it's man, insulting that but you're me sitting regarding here, you as a fellow citizen. That you're That's sitting here, whatever ethnicity you are, explaining to me whatever ethnicity I'm what it's like to be black. Whatever America. ethnicity I'm I am, sorry. I'll tell you what I am. I'm an Indian American. I'm proud of it. But I think we should have this debate. Black, white, doesn't matter. Oh, he took that so personally, and then he got fired. Yeah, he did. <laughs> what do you, uh... I bought some, uh... <laughs> you give, you, give you some lemons, you make some lemonade. There so you, you go. Squeeze a little there bit. you go. You got your silly little joke yeah, I in. I, I, All right, now, I, I Jamie, one. give him back over there. Let's bring him in. Bring you've, him got, in. You've, got, you've got to get the... Got I got to get the Come on, Gus. Come on, Gus. Let's get over here. Oh, oh there you go. So, um, what do you think about what, what's your plan when you debate Trump? Yeah, look, I'm just going to call it like it is. Yeah, you had you had a chance to do what you were going to do, and we'll let the <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to let Gus out on the stage. Yes, and and you know I'm going to give him credit for what he did. Yeah, you know he he took the country America first agenda as far as he was going to take it. We're going to take it to the next level. And you know what I tell people is, Greg, is America first doesn't belong to Donald Trump. Yeah. It doesn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. It belongs to the people of this country, actually. Right. We remember that it was... No, nobody what owns about, it. What would you do about crime when it's a, such a, a city problem and no one's really done anything? Well, yeah, I think... Snacks for him? Oh, he's got, oh, he found him. He found he him. Found he found the snacks. He found the snacks. He's supposed to hide the snacks around that's your right, body. That's, that's, right, that's what that's I right. do. You know, so here's, here's the funny thing is my wife and I actually have a deal. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I'm not the dog person in the family. She's been wanting to get a dog. <laughs> I vetoed it. But she said that if you make me move to Washington, D.C. to the White House, we're getting a dog. So yeah. I think the chances are we're going to get a Frenchie now if yeah. we're successful. They are, uh, there's a lot of dogs in D.C. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them in the White House. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. One of them now. So uh, what, what do you think is the biggest problem facing America? I think we're in the middle of a national identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Yes, most people my age, really yeah. any age, mm -hmm. what it means to be American today, you get a blank stare in response. Yeah. They've That's replaced, a problem. They replaced patriotism with identity. They did. Everybody's into who or what they are and not what they belong to. Right. Race, yeah. gender, sexuality, climate. Mm -hmm. I think we can revive the individual. Yeah. Family, the nation, God, mm -hmm. four letter words you're not supposed to say. 
I think uh, it's what three we're missing. Letters with yeah, well, well, it's become a four-letter word. Yes, it has. Make it a point here. Two Ds. Yeah, yeah. That's how we treat it. <laughs> yes. That's how we treat it anyway. Yes. Um, Ooh, there he goes. God, Gus Vivek, you know, you don't, you're not going to have a chance with Gus. Gus is, Gus is restless here. I like it. Gus got energy. Yeah, I hope he doesn't get electrocuted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be three dogs in one month. Oh, no. <laughs> so... <laughs> How would you deal with the fentanyl crisis? I believe I know that you were like, you've got a pretty aggressive stance. Yeah, look, I think that we shouldn't apologize for this. We have a problem on the southern border. Chinese manufactured fentanyl coming from, I'm not even kidding, this Wuhan. It's coming all the way over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put the military on the border and I would use our military to annihilate the drug cartels. I don't, I don't know why that's a problem. It, it, it should have done be. that with like terrorists and it's a terrorist kind of thing. Bin Laden, Soleimani. If we can do it over there, we can do it to the drug cartels south of our own border. Gus, what do you think about that? Do you think that that's the solution for our terror, our drug problem? We're going to let the dogs out on them. Yeah. (laughs) Nicely done. Nicely done. What about um, immigration? You notice that you see Mayor Adams now suddenly sounding like uh, Donald Trump now that he has to come face to face with being a sanctuary city. What would you do? So, again, I believe use our military to secure our own border. If we can use it to secure somebody else's border halfway around the world, we can use it to secure our own southern border. Mm -hmm. So it's not just building the wall. It's securing the wall with our actual military. And that's that's my what I with Trump on the debate stage. That's what I would say is great ideas. Now let's actually take it one step further and get the job done, which we can do if we're doing it based on first principles and moral authority, not just vengeance and grievance. And that's why I want to go further with that America first. Can you elaborate on the phrase first principles? I always hear that and I always pretend like I know what it means. It means remember, like gravity. Well, it's like ba- the basic, yeah, the basic <laughs> ideas that set the nation into motion. Yeah, merit is a principle. Free speech is a principle. Rule of law. We were about to talk about mm-hmm. basic principle. The idea we're talking about this with Biden. The people who we elect to run the government ought to be the ones who actually run the government, not this managerial bureaucracy that runs the show. Those are basic American principles. I think the last president we had that tied his policies to actual principle, the why was Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. I think we have missed that in this country for a long time. I'm the first millennial actually running for U.S. president ever as a Republican. And I'm doing it as a member of my generation. I'm tying this to the why for the next generation. Yeah. That's amazing because it's almost like the millennials just got skipped, right? You know, on everything. They kind of got screwed. Joe, are you a millennial? Generation X, but we didn't do much better. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And Biden's over twice my age and then some. But it's not just an age thing. It's an ability to channel this to young people in this country. And that's what I'm trying to do in the race. Well, I think I think Gus is uh, Gus is giving you a thumbs up or crapped on my shirt. (laughs) (laughs) Gus, what do you think? Any questions? I think he's good. All right. Go away. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for that good sport on our. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. He was great. Yeah, he was great. Our inaugural dog segment. All right, up next, using your phone on the toilet, then you might want to boil it. (laughs) A story in five words. Story in five words. Your phone's alive with poo. All right, Emily, you were dying to talk about this. No, I wasn't. Don't lie now. We're on TV, and you can't lie on television. <laughs> Haven't you learned? A recent study found that 100% of cell phones, 100, 100%, test, that's your favorite phrase, by the way, totally. tested <laughs> at traces of E. coli and fecal cells, 100%. And chances of contaminating your phone, Emily, increased when you flush. So, should you stop flushing? I reject everything about what you just said. First of all, and also, it, they found cockroach feces on also all the phones. Oh. But here's my point, everybody, before we all freak out. Know the subjects. Yeah. What thousand people did they pull? Yeah. They were in the UK. Maybe in prison, maybe in a fraternity, whatever it was. Because I am sorry, if you swiped my phone, there is no fecal matter on it. I don't take it to the bathroom with me. I don't flush with the lid open. This whole story was so disgusting. You don't flush with the lid open? Who does? Well, you kind of, it's kind of fun to see it all go away. <laughs> I can't. 
mean, come on. You guys. It's like, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's science. It's science. <laughs> trust the science. Yeah, trust the science. <laughs> No, I feel like everybody in this study was disgusting. I don't think they have cell phones in prison, Emily. Joe, <laughs> deep thoughts? Greg, my phone and I don't have any secrets, and that's not all because of Google. But I'll say this. You see these stories everywhere about, oh, there's poop bacteria on the fountain sodas. There's poop bacteria on the mint dispensers. And I'll tell you what, that poop bacteria is not good for you, but... What's worse than the poop bacteria is worrying about all the poop bacteria. That's going to stress you out. You're going to have a, a weakened immune system. So you just got to accept that there's poop everywhere. We're just living in a world of poop. Uh, You're right. You know what? You should just cover yourself with poop, and then you wouldn't have to worry. Better yet, a poop vaccine. Yeah, get a poop, you know, which a poop vaccine would be an injection of poop into your body. Jamie, yes. your life is, um, your life is already. <laughs> By the way, that's the first time we swore today. Oh, Good yeah. job. See what happens when Cat and Tyrus are off? Huh? Very clean show. You know what scares me more than like microbes and feces on my phone? What? Leaving my phone with my girlfriend at the table. Yes. Amen. When you go to the bathroom, yes. you can't leave your phone on anywhere because they'll go through it. Yeah, and I have two quick things. I don't cheat on her. I just don't want her looking at my Uber Eats receipts. <laughs> Number two, my girlfriend's imaginary. But you know what? <laughs> she's, she's Canadian, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, a shock teacher. Though, if you honestly want, want to get rid of, uh, if you want to get rid of <laughs> from your phone, delete the CNN app. Mm. <laughs> Vivek, they say smartphones can be dirtier than the toilet seats themselves. Should we start making our phones out of toilet seats? <laughs> oh, this is, this is innovation. This yes. Is what we call, I get, tell Apple. I like this idea. You know, I, I think there's a lot of good ideas. So, so a, lot of, a lot of people know this, but Martin Luther, the re leader of the Reformation, came to his idea that you achieve salvation through faith alone while he was sitting on the toilet seat. And, really? And he wrote it down in a notebook. So... I don't know if I'm ever going to have an idea that big, but I want, I, I want to be able to jot it down without washing my hands. That's, yes. Dirty phone. Pretty big idea. You know, um, Martin Luther, when was that? What era, year was that? A few centuries ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What kind of toilet was that? Well, I think you might have been squatting for all that. Yeah, I mean, right? that, they, didn't, they didn't figure this stuff out until like 20 years ago. Yes? I just want to end on a positive note. What? Which is that at the end of this study, all of the 100% of phones that had the fecal matter on it and the cockroach... Fecal matter, it was not enough to be harmful. So everybody can. Yes, oh, yes. happy ending, everybody. Yes. <laughs> happy ending. Oh my God. Thank you so I much. Hoping, the I was more you for know. A it's disgusting, but it's not psycho. harmful. You're a psycho. <laughs> There's only Our, a little bit of feces on your Yeah, phone. just a little bit of feces. Okay, don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs>